And I was a Hakomi teacher, in, um, and uh, I wasn't really looking for another model. But I found out about this man, Richard Schwartz, who lived kind of almost in my neighborhood, who, had, uh, who was a family therapist, and um, come up with a model from listening to his clients, that he sort of threw away what he'd learned mostly in, in school and just stayed curious about his clients and what, really, what he could learn from them. And I was really intrigued by that. And I thought, I'd like to meet this man. So when I found out that he was offering a supervision group in, uh, in Chicago, and I, I was looking for supervision anyway, and it was also a chance to, to begin to learn the model. I actually had a dream one night where I thought, oh yeah, I wanted to talk to Dick about taking the training. And so in the dream, I, I went to him and I said, I'm thinking about taking this training that's going to start up in Chicago. And he said, no, 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 I want you to be in this group of four, this special group of four. And then the music started playing, and we started dancing, and I was leading. I was leading in the dancing. We're dancing together to this slow music. And Dick just got a big smile on his face, and he said, I like not having to lead all the time. Wow. So I actually got the courage up to tell Dick about the dream. And he said, um, you know, I have no more room in the training, but I need, I need assistance in the training. So that's how I, how I began teaching in Akomi. I mean, sorry, in IFS. And... Um, and then, you know, then I did the next training and then the next training and then I was just really kind of hooked. And I, I remembered that dream saying that he likes to not lead all the time. And as I began to see how it was just growing, just catching on all over the country, coming to Asheville and helping him, I, um, I had a laptop computer and I started copying down the exercises that we were coming up with to, to turn the training into a little more experiential uh, training than it was back in those days, and to bring the body in a little bit more than we had in those days, and um, and out of that, copying down his lectures and and recording the exercises that we came up with, um, came the trainer's manual, mm -hmm. which which then allowed him to not have to lead all the time and me not to have to lead all the time, and and it just created it ended up you know facilitating this wonderful community of trainers that we have today. One thing that I really love uh, watching happen and facilitating towards is the emergence of the self in the group. So I like, um, I like for my students to not only feel self emerging in their own systems, but to see it emerging on every level. So to really experience the, this group of uh, you know, what starts out as mostly strangers, and then over the course of, of a training to just grow in safety and uh, compassion for each other until finally there's this, this other, you know, um, energy that begins to uh, move in and through the group. And that is what I think really inspires and excites us all to think about taking this work out into the world, because uh, I think we all know that the world needs that. And uh, so I love it when a group gets to experience that. Um, um, maybe on another level, what I really hope my students will will achieve or experience is um, yeah just um, more more ex more compassion um, than maybe they 've ever felt in their lives, and uh, more acceptance of their own their own parts you know um, and um, yeah, I would say I would say that happens. I would say that students come in just expecting to learn the model, hoping to learn how to how to bring this wonderful model into their work with their clients, and they get far more than they have even known they signed up for. I've heard from people that they they find me calm and um, and yet passionate, and my training style. I think it's very experiential. I really have a bias towards experiential learning. Um, and I, I try to put a real good uh, balance in of large group to medium-sized group to small group to alone time um, and a good flow of uh, didactic discussion, experiential. You know, I really like to kind of keep things moving and flowing. Well, um, with pretty much every concept that's in the, uh, in the training, like we start with managers. You know, we know that in our work with clients we begin with managers. So we also um, invite manager parts to come forward early on in the training. So rather than just talking about managers and who they are and what they, 
how they appear. We just have people find their own parts that are automatically up because they're at the beginning of a training. And their manager parts, of course, will be there protecting them from any, any painful things happening in a strange situation. So we just, we just invite that and make it safe enough for people to find their managers and get to know managers from the inside out. Well, I would just say um, you will have your expectations met and then some. Yeah, it will be far more than you ever hoped for, and you will not regret it. You know, there's just been a wonderful weave between my practice and the teaching, you know, that they both inform each other. And I even find today that after I teach for a weekend, I come back and it feels like it has enlivened my private practice. I feel like I'm even more on the money with the, with the model and, and with my, my clarity about how, how, how the model can really help this person. Um, it's really helped me, I think, to over and over again, I've been able to find more and more layers in my own um, self-like therapist parts that, that have gotten in the way, in some very subtle way, of me just being more purely present with my clients and just with whatever they bring to me. So I'm actually very grateful for that wonderful balance in my life that, um, that just helps keeping, keep my, my practice still alive for me. The model, of course, is not just applicable to psychotherapy that it's really a model that describes uh, not only our own systems and how to come to a place of greater self-energy within our own internal systems, but also our relationships with others. So anyone who relates to any other, any other single person, whether it's a, you know, a spouse or a parent or a, a partner or um, a colleague or someone that they work for or with, um, it's going to help them in their... It's going to help them be happier... Uh, more confident, um, um, clear, loving people in, in every, every aspect of life, I think. Yeah, a community of self-led people that just keeps deepening and expanding. Yeah. I don't know if that's the greatest, but it's a good one. It's, it's really something I'm feeling right one. now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really in touch with that right now.